We are set to bring you 30 minutes of news, information, and maybe a little bit of entertainment right here on CitySpan. Savannah's largest project ever is moving along. The team is in place with the help of outside contractors to manage the new arena. We'll introduce you to the new trio with strong local ties. Savannah's biggest parade and event is well in the books. Now the city sits down to break it down with a look toward 2019 St. Patrick's Day Parade and Festival. It's a project at a cost of $21 million. We'll take you inside our wastewater plant and bring you the breakdown of biosolids. Plus, Congress is in town. Well, the Congress for New Urbanism, how will it help the city? The Mayor Unleashed, helping to knock down homes and beat blight. Bank on this and a visit to Art Camp. We are set to bring you those stories and much more right now on CitySpan. And welcome to CitySpan, your source for news and information in and about the city of Savannah. I'm your host, Ken Slats. We'll start with perhaps the largest project ever to take place in the city. That's over on the west side, the Arena and Canal District. Your Splos Dollars going to work. Recently, the city naming the companies that have been hired to manage the Arena project. team was one of the most critical components to us being awarded the project. We've got uh, two stellar local partners, uh, Greenline Architecture and the Flow Corporation. To be able to attract a major firm like JLL teamed up with us because of our experience and uh, our suitability for Savannah and the project, we are super excited. It's a once in a lifetime um, opportunity for, for me and for our firm to be part of it. Mastriani and her Greenline architecture firm will play a major role in the look of the complex. But we'll help select the design team uh, just with, with the aesthetic side of things in mind. How, um, how the arena and the buildings around it uh, become part of the fabric of the city. We've worked with them on prior projects and uh, so we had a relationship and so it was natural for us to come together uh, but we felt we put a best-in-class team together. JLL is the leading management firm with an impressive track record. Recently completed the Atlanta Braves Stadium, SunTrust Park. Uh, we've worked on uh, Madison Square Gardens, uh, University of Georgia, Sanford Field. They'll rely on the Pelote Corporation to help gather the actual workforce, focusing on inclusion through the opportunities for small and disadvantaged business enterprises. And there's a number of ways to do that, a number of those ways we are currently talking about internally as a team of how we can be not only inclusive of businesses, but the labor itself. There's several training programs that have proven successful around the country and we are very excited about introducing at least one, if not two, of those to the city. Not only important to the mayor and the city of Savannah, but it's also something very important to JLL. You know, our company's built on diversity and inclu inclusion uh, at every level. They, that was paramount in our selection of our local partners. Really, our commitment is not to just meeting the city standard, uh, but really going above and beyond. And so, you know, the minimum percentage requirement, we, uh, we literally doubled it. The right CMR firm, the right architectural firm, have an inclusion at the very top level, everything will dwindle down and it's done properly. And we know that we're the right team to make sure that that happens. They are all part of a team that's excited to get to work. In the next three or four months, we will be uh, issuing an RFP for the design team, which is a request for proposal. Uh, they'll be interviewing and uh, submitting information. Uh, and, and the same for the construction company. So we're kind of expanding our team that's been started here. We are specifically talking about how quickly we can get the architectural services, um, uh, RFQ if you will, out to the public. And immediately after that, we'll do the same thing with the uh, construction contractor. Well, I can tell you from our perspective, our team is very in tune on very quickly making some dirt turn. This is a multi-purpose facility. It's very unique. 
you know, to uh, event centers that are put. It's not a div Division I collegiate, you know, uh, athletic center. It's not a pro sports facility. This is a multi-purpose arena that a city needs to use day in and day out for all sorts of different functions. And so when it's properly programmed and properly designed, I think we can anticipate seeing a shovel in the ground Q1 of next year. The arena project is SPLOS funded. It's expected to cost around $160 million and it's just one piece of the entire Canal District project. <laughs> Mayor Deloach had the opportunity to use the big digs starting the demolition of a blighted house in Edgemere, Sackville. It's one of the aspects of the Savannah Shines initiative to clean up neighborhoods. The mayor was joined by Alderman John Hall, whose district is the first to receive the funds for this specific purpose. We budgeted $1.6 million to, for this initiative, and it's going to pay off. We're going to make a difference before we leave. This is what our I've always dreamed of being able to do is to start an opportunity of taking a house that is blighted, get rid of that house and build another house in its place. I think that's going to do more for our city than anything else we can do. I think it not only gives people opportunity for a job, an opportunity for an education, an opportunity for a future. All of these uh, kids over here have a great chance. It also improves the neighborhood as nobody in the world wants to live by something that looks like that. Habitat for Humanity will work with Youth Build Savannah's construction training program to build the new house. They'll then sell the house to a qualified first-time home buyer. In just a few uh, words, I'd like to say, you know, if I could give you any advice um, about being a leader is uh, be a mentor, be a trainer, develop the people underneath you give them all the power they need to get their jobs done. You know, I, I've always used the motto, treat everything like a campground, leave it better than you found it. If you do that, Savannah's a better place every day. Sound advice from Chief Mark Revenue as the Savannah Police Department promoted 11 officers to the rank of Captain, Lieutenant, and Sergeant. Family, friends, and elected officials were on hand for the ceremony held at the Savannah Civic Center, including Mayor Eddie Deloach who praised the work of the department and congratulated the officers on their promotions. We want to thank each one of you for what you're doing. We appreciate all the effort you put in. We appreciate the citizens of Savannah that are here, that are willing to take the time out to talk to each one of you. Thank you again for all you represent. Thank you, you're the best of the best. Officers promoted to captain include Michelle Halford and George Gundich, Bradley Beto, Michael McFall, Shanita Young, Rodney Reynolds, Hiram Rivera, and Chris Talley were all promoted to the rank of lieutenant. Zachary Burdett, Rebecca Gregory, and James Hutcherson are now sergeants within the department. Congratulations to these 11 officers. Job well done. In the city of Savannah, PD is making some very positive strides. Total violent crime down 7% year to date. Commercial robberies with one of the biggest declines, down under 10 incidents compared to 32 at this time last year. And theft and burglaries included in full property crimes down 18% at an indication that more folks are locking their cars year to date theft from vehicles compared to 2017. Now that number has fallen by 154 incidents. The city of Savannah is spending $20 million to upgrade the President Street Water Reclamation Facility. Part of the reason is to fulfill increased federal regulations. We are kind of in between the old process and the new. The purpose of our plan is to treat all the wastes uh, in our service area. That's a lot of waste and water. How about this? The average family of four generates around 400 gallons of wastewater a day. Multiply that by the entire greater Savannah area. Our goal here is to get the water to where it meets uh, environmental regulations and put it back into the Savannah River. Uh, and we do a really good job of that. This, this is our current dewatering area. Um, our belt filter presses are upstairs. They dewater our biosolids. And currently it's being pumped to a truck. On the other side of us, on the other side over there is where our shield incinerators were. They're decommissioned. So we're not feeding them anymore. We're just feeding 
into a truck. And how much being fed or taken out every day here? We take about five 40-yard trucks a day. We'll be doing the same thing. This is the same unit that's out there. The one out there is newer, has a little more technology built into it. But this is what the product is before it goes to the dryer. So you'll have this same product here, which is 75% water. Uh, it'll go from here in that process to a dryer. The drier I can get this, the less weight I put in the truck and the less money we pay in the landfill. How often is this running? This is running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So basically we'll still have this, the new right. belt, into here and then you'll go to those dryers we saw. Exactly. And then it will come out. Exactly. And that one extra step, how much does that mean to our environment? A lot. I mean, you're reducing your impact by 98%. This is going to be our new biosolids handling facility. Uh, you'll have a dewatering on one side, which we'll go in and look at, and then a dryer on the other side. Your heat through here, and then your, there's going to be fans. You see the fans up top? Uh -huh. They'll be blowing air down across these heating coils to dry. to dry it. From here, it'll get conveyed into a pelletizer, which will actually uh, make it into a uniform pellet. And that's, how, that's the final product? That's the final product. The pellet will be the final product. What they've got constructed here will be a truck scale, uh, and eventually, You'll see it from the street as there'll be a silo. We're going to begin construction on that. So there'll be an 85 foot silo here that the dry product will go in. A truck will drive up there, we'll load up the truck and weigh it, and then it'll go from there. With the current volume of biosolids shipped to a third party landfill, it costs the city $682,000 a year. That'll be cut to a fraction. Right now we're doing five a day. We might get one. A one truck a day. Right. Going to the landfill. Right. This should last for till 2045 easy. Okay. Uh, the product that we're going to be generating will meet EPA standards It's classified as, as a Class A biosolids, which pretty much means there's nothing else we can do to it. It could be used for cover or other things, um, but we haven't gotten to that point yet. Once the system comes online, we'll have to do testing with the Department of Agriculture and EPD uh, to see, you know, make sure it passes. First of all, it gets to Class A status, which we believe it will, and then we can start looking for beneficial uses. Hendrix says the new biosolids process will be underway in September and after the testing and inspection process they'll be working full-scale operations by the end of the year. The city recently wrapped up a pilot project to test the use and feasibility of electric vehicles in their fleet. It's in support of the Savannah Forward Strategic Plan priority to convert 15 percent of the city's vehicle fleet to alternate fuels or hybrid technology by 2023. And you know, what I really love about it is electric vehicles, you know, they're different than gasoline vehicles. They don't have a tailpipe, they don't have a normal engine, which means they don't require the normal maintenance, oil changes, all of that that you would normally see in a, a gasoline or fossil fuel burning car. And so that means they save money on maintenance costs, they save money on fuel, and they also save a huge amount of carbon emissions for our Savannah community. Now one of the things that we get from this vehicle is an incredible amount of data uh, in its usage, where it was used, how it was used, and we want to go back and look at that and just make sure that anecdotally we think this is a pretty good investment. We just want to go back and make sure that the data confirms that. With our enforcement area being in the downtown area, uh, we're never going to touch in a full day shift even half of the capacity of what a full charge would offer. And uh, it's, it's, been, it's been absolutely wonderful. It's super quiet, very user friendly. Um, and overall, between myself and the other three drivers, nothing but praises. Solid vehicle. The data collected during the test will help determine if electric vehicles should be used in the city's fleet. Now, the four-week program was a partnership with Georgia Power and Nissan Motors. Time to take a quick break. Here's an interesting story coming up. Did you know the Congress for New Urbanism is bringing its national conference to Savannah? with results from a recently completed study. We will fill you in. Plus the lessons learned from our largest annual event, tested to the max with our VP visiting. And on a state level, the legislative session is over. What the results from this year's agenda means for you. As we head to break, check out the work of our local dispatchers, recently recognized during National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week. Hats off to the hardworking bunch of first responders. Dispatchers are and, and our call takers are everything to the police department and to the city. 
They are the front line of customer service. From March of last year until February of this year, we've handled over 600,000 911 calls. That's a lot of calls. People truly believe when they call that if they're having the worst day of their life, that calling 911 is going to help them. And they're right. We truly are their first line and we really are the first responders. We've handled everything from a child not breathing um, to shootings to someone who, an elderly person who may not be able to find a telephone number. Especially when they're by themselves and they're panicking or, you know, and they're in a situation where they're just like, they feel like their life is threatened and you're there to be able to, you know, reassure them that everything is going to be okay. It makes me feel really, really good. It makes me feel really good and I'm proud to do what I do because I know that we help people and we save lives. Greenwich is a graceful, peaceful, serene place. And it's a, a great sense of security when a loved one uh, is about to pass or dies unexpectedly. You've got a place to go to. Bonaventure gets most all the attention and it is visited by thousands and thousands of visitors every day and it's grand. But I think people sell themselves short when they don't meander a little bit farther down the road and come to Greenwich. It, it gives you a sense of stability. You feel like you're still in your savannah when you're here. We're back here on City Span, but always on social media. Check out City of Savannah, active on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. We are here to keep you informed. Turning to St. Patrick's Day, what an event it was. On a national level this year, evermore. Our city has gathered all the info and will now use it to make St. Patrick's Day 2019 even better. We're not going to wait till next year to start addressing some of these things. We're not going to wait till next year to start talking to council. We're going to start bringing these things up out of these committees and again, solutions for the manager and the council to, to implement. Solutions to all the aspects about this massive parade and festival, from safety to security to sanitation, all at the top of the list. While these are ongoing priorities year to year, the visit of Vice President Mike Pence certainly brightened the spotlight. Typical plan for St. Patrick's Day and all of a sudden we have a VIP coming. So um, much like a you know a disaster, you have a, a, an unexpected event, a, cas a cascading event. So it just uh, allowed our staff to you know really stand up and perform. And, um, but we're trying to capture those good things and we're also trying to address issues that were brought up as well. Security with the aid of the Secret Service, state and other local agencies clearly passed the test. The frustrations lie in the task of keeping Savannah clean, specifically the squares where an overwhelming amount of people visit and with it comes more trash. There's always things we can sharpen and hone and, and improve and, and not only improve it for our employees but for the visitors and the residents who come to the parade and come to the festival. So that, and that's ultimately what we want. We want to make sure people have an enjoyable enjoyable and safe experience when they come to Savannah. So Donnelly and his staff, working year round for disasters like hurricanes, continue to tweak and evolve the city's overall emergency management plan. Those things we use in time of disaster, we can use for these events like St. Patrick's Days and Rock and Roll Marathon. It's the same processes, generally it's the same people being involved. So uh, we use these type of events for practice and to, to hone our skills, you know, revise our policies, plans, and really figure out, you know, how we would do something in a disaster. Savannah police cracked down on several festival and party goers, 29 arrests. The city's alcohol beverage compliance unit cited 17 businesses for furnishing drinks to persons under 21. Solid work from our partners over at CAT. The shuttle shipped more than 13,000 passengers to their destinations. Getting and maintaining good credit is an important part of your financial well-being. Here's Richard Ree from Consumer Credit Counseling Service with some credit education we all can use. Are you paying attention to your credit? In today's world, credit is a fundamental part of life. Your credit is important because it can affect everything from going to college, buying a car, having insurance, 
and renting or buying a home. Here are some things to know about credit. Credit refers to borrowing money and the ability to do so. Having credit is important. When you don't have any active lines of credit, you're considered credit invisible. One out of five Savannians is credit invisible. Once you establish a line of credit by borrowing and repaying money in some fashion, you'll have a credit history. Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion are the three major credit reporting agencies. Your credit score is more than a number. Your payment history is the main factor in your credit score. This number may fluctuate between which score a creditor uses, the source of the score, and the purpose of pulling it. Your credit history is a record of all your repayments and debts. A credit report is a physical record of all those transactions from sources such as banks, credit card companies, agencies, and government entities. Everything that you have borrowed money for, including student loans, store credit cards, and car loans may be on your credit report. Your income is not on your credit report. Check your credit report for free once a year by using annualcreditreport.com. This is the only free and secure method of checking your credit report. Remember to track your credit report so you can understand how it can affect you. If you have any questions on how to review your credit report, schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment today with Consumer Credit Counseling Service. Call us at 912-691-2227. Another way to learn more about credit is to visit our free upcoming credit workshops. For details, visit our website. Until next time, I'm Richard Reeve and you can bank on this. much, Richard. It is a 40-day state legislative session spread out over a few months, a chance for local municipalities to be heard on a state level, leveraging specific concerns for changes or keeping the status quo with state laws. So we knew heading in that it was going to be a challenging legislative session. Out of our city manager's office, Brett Bell is the liaison to our local and state legislatures. He says election years, like 2018, are historically difficult ones to get major policy changes. But a lot of our focus was on playing defense. Um, one of them was there was a threat to take away local control of, um, of regulating the short-term vacation rental industry. The group that was trying to um, deregulate the short-term vacation rental industry was Expedia, which is one of the largest online hotel booking uh, companies in the world. Playing defense worked, keeping intact the STVR local ordinance, which Savannah adopted in 2017. Also on defense was to keep intact the shopping cart ordinance, Savannah adopted in January of this year. And Walmart was the one that was trying to uh, kill our shopping cart ordinance. So again, these are two of the largest companies in the world that were fighting really measures that were adopted by the city of Savannah. Um, but yeah, it does show that um, you know, most of the power is at the local level. And I think most of our legislators do believe in home rule and the, um, and the right of local officials to make the best decisions for local citizens. Savannah joined along with local legislators in making it a felony for anyone knowingly providing a felon with a weapon, the lone gun violence measure to pass on the state level. Also approved was an issue on real estate. The city can now use the assistance of a professional broker to market properties. And market in ways that others just take for granted, like putting on an MLS listing, um, marketing it internationally. Again, these are properties that are gonna be um, worth you know, five to six to seven million dollars um, and will attract international buyers. And right now, we don't really have a mechanism to, to get it in front of those, um, those developers. And finally, an exciting time for high-tech entrepreneurs right here in our city. We were successful in getting Savannah named um, uh, an innovation technology quarter. So this is just the beginning of the process. So right now the state of Georgia has created a show. And they've told us, um, we've created this innovation quarter for the, city of, uh, for the city of Savannah. And it's up to the city of Savannah to tell us what it needs to be. All these bills are passed and set to go into effect. Once signed by Governor Nathan Deal, they will become the law. One more break, we'll be back with an education session from the Congress, the Congress for New Urbanism, helping guide Savannah toward a full city master plan. 
Plus, are you hungry for history? We'll cap our show off with a few of the entertainers that paved the way in Savannah. Stick with us. The stretch run of City Span is next. As we head to break, check out the creative campers from our spring break version of Cultural Arts Camp. Kai is a fierce red Chinese dragon who guides warriors on adventures. Today we are working on characters, so they're going to write a story and they're going to design and draw their very own character. Meep is an alien slash robot. He eats mushrooms and pebbles. So is he someone that makes fireworks and rockets and stuff? Yeah. Yeah? Creativity really helps them to learn how to solve problems, sometimes in a unique or creative way. You can learn drawing and you can apply that to real life problems. That's the key, is with art, that they have a chance to just express themselves and have a good time. I'm painting my squid. I like that it's super messy. Kids this age, they're not uptight. They don't worry about what people think. They just have a really good time. They just go with it, and they come up with crazy ideas, but they don't worry about what other people think about it. This is Lily. This is Jay. This one is mine of a submarine. What colors are in there? Blue and yellow. This is Leonardo. Kenneth, what are you doing? I'm, pay I'm paying the sea. Sometimes they're really creative in ways that I would never think of. Um, sometimes they think of really interesting um, subject matter for their artwork. Just to watch them as, you know, the, as they say, the lights come on and they really have a good time. Fire the clay up to how hot did we say? 1800 degrees today, yep. right? Yep. They're very open, which is nice. Um, and they're very optimistic, which is really nice. Dispatchers are in, and our call takers are everything to the police department and to the city. They are the front line of customer service. But we have to um, first be a family and we have to understand each other. And of course that comes in when you're in a training position, you're getting your uh, hands on with police, fire, and ambulance, and also your coworkers. They deal with everything from a woman giving birth to an alarm call to a major incident, uh, you know, involving a fire. Um, they deal with it all, and they're they're um, trained very well to um, calm the people down, to get the most information as fast as possible, and get it to our first responders. The calls that stick with with me personally are children, elderly people. I want to reach out and, and call them back and see what happened or, you know, even go by and take them, you know, whatever they called us for, you know. I love everyone here and just have the utmost respect for what they do. And welcome back to the stretch run of City Span. Earlier this year, several professionals from around the country gathered as the Congress for New Urbanism, spending time at two sites in Savannah, analyzing what we as a city need to do to better urbanize for the years to come. And whenever we go to a city uh, for the Congress, we try to do a project or two within the city limits to kind of show the principles or showcase the principles of new urbanism. Which is exactly why members of the Congress spent a long weekend in Savannah for back in early March, strategically placed in two areas, the extreme south side and the Waters Avenue corridor. Of course, Savannah is so well known uh, around the world as one of the first planned cities in America. So it has certain really beautiful qualities about it. and. The periphery around does not share those same qualities uh, and what we're trying to do is look at how we can make one improve the quality of life, the walkability and uh, the connection to the historic core. It all starts with small business. The city already has adopted enterprise zones, one of which is the Waters Avenue corridor extending from Wheaton Street south to Victory Drive. This gives business owners a considerable tax break. You don't want franchises coming in and taking the money out of the city, but you want to really try to get local businesses that will keep a large percentage of the money in circulation within the community. 
And that's one of the principles, underlying principles of new urbanism, is that we don't try to import anything and drop it in here. It's really trying to look at what's here and emulate the best qualities of the city. While they love their city and they love going to downtown, the historic area, um, they would also like there to be a neighborhood that, that is really sort of representative of the South Side. The second legacy project in Savannah is on the South Side. Almost unanimously, citizens want an identity. Certainly, the you know, sort of the state of the mall and retail spaces that are emptying out, we just learned that the Kroger was closing. So that only sort of reinforced, I think, that sense that, that their, their neighborhood feels a little left behind in terms of um, uh, you know, developing as a place. Georgia Southern Armstrong is a huge component of, of both why we're here, why the city wants us to look at this neighborhood, um, and we see them as a great opportunity for how the area can, can be transformed. The Congress will submit the results of the study mid-May as the full conference embarks on their national conference right here in Savannah. And finally on CitySpan, did you know that silent film star Rudolph Valentino made one of his first movies right here in Savannah, Stolen Moments? An early silent film was shot on location at Greenwich, one of the South's most magnificent mansions and gardens. The gardens are what we see in Stolen Moments. Um, from 1920. This was um, a vehicle for um, Marguerite Namara. She was an opera singer and um, it starred, um, her co-star was Rudolph Valentino and this was one of his first movies. Right after this one, in fact, they expedited this so that he could go and make The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, which was the first million dollar movie and he became a star overnight. It's part of Savannah's long history as a preferred location for movies, dating back to when Jacksonville, Florida was the winter film capital of the world, at one time boasting 30 movie studios. Always learning something here in Savannah. Now you can get more information about Savannah's film history and Jacksonville's courtesy of the city's municipal records and archives. Just visit youtube.com slash city of Savannah and look for the Hungry for History series of videos Hungry for History lectures are also usually held monthly and are free and open to the public. For more information on that, visit savannahga.gov or give us a call, 651-6411. That'll wrap up this edition of CitySpan. We continue to keep you up to date on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. Our new city website is big and it's bold, and all your videos, press conferences, and special events are logged onto our City of Savannah YouTube page. We can't thank you enough for joining us here on SGTV's CitySpan and thank you for making Savannah 